Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at an event which is going on this weekend for the US Navy's birthday. Basically, they're bringing back the USS Cal for Golden Eagles, and then also uh, they have a decal which is on offer too. It says in the article, on the 13th of October 1775, the Continental Fleet was created by the 13 colonies that separated from Great Britain. When it was first created, this fleet consisted of only a few ships that went on to battle with British ships. Today, the US Navy is the world's largest navy in terms of ships and also naval aircraft. It is pretty chunky, there's a lot to it. So, with the USS Cowell being available for Golden Eagles, you can always uh, get discounts using my uh, code when it comes to the Gaijin store, even when it comes to G, you can use it. And then also, we have a decal. The decal is for the USS Missouri, uh, basically a famous ship decal, which is always nice. Basically, all you have to do from the 13th of October to the 16th of October is play three battles using US ships to receive it, and you can get good old Big Mo. Let's have a look at the cowl and some of its qualities. So the USS Cowell is a Fletcher class destroyer, and uh, we actually have another Fletcher class in the game already, uh, which is of course the USS Fletcher. The basic difference between them is the rank and also the secondary weapons. The Cowell came in as one of the early kind of pre-order destroyers, and all of these pre-order destroyers were straight up pay to win, because they were just better than their standard counterparts. The Cowell is still better than the Fletcher class when it comes to to its secondary armament, and also the fact that it's rank 3 instead of rank 2. Uh, so basically what that means is uh, the vehicle can do both dailies and also specials, whereas uh, the standard Fletcher class can only do, or the Fletcher from the Fletcher class can only do the first daily and that's it. So the cowl is just significantly better than it. It also means that you can run it with rank 2s, the Mitcher, the Fletcher, or the Gearing, or even the Wilkinson, and bring them up to rank 3 at the same BR to be able to do dailies and specials with them too. So it's actually quite a nice little thing to have if you don't want to get something like the Moffat uh, or even the Frank Knox, which kind of fills a similar role. The US uh, kind of naval tech tree is insanely powerful. So 4-7 is really strong uh, for destroyers. Uh, 5-0 is strong as well. The starter cruisers are okay, but, you know, they're not great, but they're better than most other starter cruisers. And then once you get to the Atlanta, everything just starts annihilating, and then uh, spading upwards, it only gets stronger and stronger. They still need some of the big heavy hitters at the top tier, but the Cal can get you into those starter cruisers pretty easily with of course the five inch guns that it has and a lot of overall firepower so these five inch guns are why the americans are so strong uh, basically they have an insane fire rate on the guns and if you use ranging shots and then you can basically just fire salvos from each one you can continuously complete a line of fire which means that the enemy will not be able to stop getting hit. So these guns uh, just provide a lot of firepower onto enemy destroyers uh, and even cruisers. And since they also have AP, uh, you can penetrate them and just annihilate pretty much everything inside of them. You also have torpedoes, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, so the torpedoes do have a decent travel distance, not as good as some other nations. You are mainly a gun destroyer compared to other things, but overall still pretty good. It also has some pretty nice secondary armaments, you know, the 40mm jewels, which are around here, and then also back here and here. And then you have some 20mm scattered around the place as well. So for AA armament for a 4.7, it's pretty good on the vehicle. And as I said, America just has an insanely strong uh, destroyer line, and this is just kind of part of it. If you want to get into naval, something like this might not be a bad choice, but also remember, pretty soon uh, the anniversary sale is going to be coming, and usually that brings along some better deals than what we see here. Uh, so I'd probably wait on it uh, to see what's going to come. It is fantastic though, just like all of the starter pre-order destroyers, it's very much worth it. I'm just wondering if there's going to be better sales going forward. 
Over the years, it's always been interesting in War Thunder to see some narratives which go around the place. And one of the things that I found really odd uh, when it comes to the game and also when it comes to its general reporting is everybody is always so focused on the future of the game and basically what's coming instead of uh, what is, well, already here. And it's no different when it comes to naval and also other areas. Instead of focusing on the F-16, people are looking for the 15, the 18, the 22, the 35, and of course stuff like the SU series or the MiG series to further expand when it comes to aviation. In ground, it's always which variant of an MBT are we going to get or which idea are we going to push forward with to be able to get it going. And it's very odd to me that that is the case. I, I've always found it super weird that even during an update season, the one thing that people are focusing on is the next update and what that's going to bring. And now you've seen it kind of uh, even influence what Gaijin is doing, where they even put out statements now where it's like, hey, so we're working on you know these vehicles for the future, Please don't get mad at us, uh, which is something I always find interesting. And for naval, it's very obvious what the future is going to be, which is why, you know, the conversations around it are always uh, pretty, at least simple in my head. And it's the simple fact that you're just going to get the technologies which are available in real life, but in the game, whether it be more missiles, whether it be more anti-ship or anti-air missiles, whether it be larger battleships and uh, going forward, you know, with the big old Second World War boys, which everybody knows and loves, the Iowa, you know, the good old Yamato and even the King George, it'll be interesting to see when they get added and what happens with them. Even the Dunkirks um, is there as well. But the question is not what's going to come, because we know submarines are going to come. We know that stuff like aircraft carriers are already there. It just depends on how they're going to add them. The question is, what comes first? And also, what order do you add these things in? And I feel like that's always been the more interesting topic. It isn't whether a vehicle is going to be added or not. Because as we've seen in War Thunder's history, if it was built it will come, is uh, basically the mantra. So the real honest question is, is what do you do first and how do you make it so it isn't too much of a shift in the game to be able to add, you know, specific things when? Do you decide to add more guided missile destroyers? Something that we saw in one of the future projections and uh, also one of the leaks. Do you decide to do that first? Is that something that needs to be done? I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe it's better to do something else with it, or uh, maybe it's better to focus on submarines. They already added the voice lines in. Which one is going to affect the game the least, or which one is ready to go even more? And this is, this is a conversation which is tough, because uh, there is an order to these things. And we've we've seen it in you know leaks past, especially a few years ago when we saw that dev server leak. There is still vehicles from that dev server leak that aren't in the game yet, <laughs> from from years ago, and it kind of shows one one or two things. The first thing, Gaijin really plans ahead when it comes to all of the ideas that they're coming in, and also there is thought put into when stuff comes into the game. I'm sure if they felt like it, they could snap fingers and then just add 50 vehicles straight away to the game itself. And uh, and they could easily, you know, do it overnight. But you need a consistent stream of content to come to be able to keep people interested because of this idea we've talked about before, where there's so, men so much of the community which is looking for that next step. And the major thing for me is I'm always worried that when you get an update, it seems like the, there's a, a decent set of people that depending on what's in that update, if there isn't a hook, then it's just seen as a bad update, even though it can be a completely fine one. It can add all the vehicles it wants to add, and, you know, they all work very well. It can also add 
a bunch of mechanics that all work well, the servers work well, there's hardly any bugs, but because there isn't that standout vehicle or there isn't that standout thing, then it just kind of gets left behind. Now, when it comes to adding vehicles, there's a ton of different factors that go to it, and not always balance um, is one of the major ones. Think about the F-14 when it was added, right? Uh, when it just couldn't be killed. It was just an insane vehicle, and it was added because of the Top Gun movie, uh, so therefore people would be more interested in the vehicle itself, and they could do some cross-promotion. So, it's worth actually, if you want to get involved in working out what's going to come next, whether it's submarines, battleships, uh, you know, more modern battleships, I should say, aircraft carriers, or even something as simple as more frigates. It might be worth having a look at what's coming out in the future, not just when it comes to Gaijin, but also what is planned for other areas of the world. Because they do definitely take that stuff into account, and even if there isn't an official cross-promotion in there, what there is, is some kind of tie to get you going and get you interested to try and fold it into other forms of media. It's really interesting to think about, and I just wish that maybe at some point we could focus on what's in the game instead of what's coming, but I understand that's just part of War Thunder and how it all works now. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see I'd you just next like time. to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Bereen, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also Lafouche for supporting the channel.